Welcome back to Fig and Farm at Home. Friend, I am so glad you're here. I had a question recently about how to choose pillows for your couch or even your bed, how to mix patterns and how to make sure that you're making it look put together and not garish. So that is today's No Before You Go. And guess what? You don't need to take notes. I have made all the notes for you. I'm going to link the blog post with pictures because don't we all love pictures that goes along with today's episode. That will be in the show notes. Enjoy today's show. How many times have you found yourself at your favorite home decor store, browsing aimlessly for an item to spruce up your space just to bring it home and then not quite like it? Or find that your effort didn't pay off the way that you imagined? That rug you bought? Too big, too small, or too brown? And the curtains? We don't need to go there. Or maybe we do in this new Tuesday quick tip series, Know Before You Go, brought to you by all the mistakes I've made before <laughs> and thankfully have learned from. Hey, I'm Danny, a former first grade teacher turned home decorator. Going from a dual income to a single income so I could stay home with my babies meant budget, like ramen eating Goodwill shopping budget. And I learned a few things along the way and definitely made a few mistakes. But I am so excited that you're here learning how you can know before you go. So put down your credit card, grab a notebook and a pen, because you're definitely going to want to take notes. It is no surprise if you've been hanging around for a while that one of my top tips to elevate the look of your home is to get rid of the, the pillows that come when you bought the couch. To get rid of them. You can use the insert, but toss or donate the pillow cover. Why would you do that? Simply put, they lack personality. And I did share a while ago about why that is, but I'm going to share again. So if I am a couch manufacturer, my goal is to make money, right? So I'm going to be putting investment into the quality, I hope, of the piece that I'm creating. But not just that, I want to appeal to the broader masses. And so I'm going to think about not you specifically, and your personality more specifically, I'm going to think about how I can generically appeal to the people who are coming through my doors or looking online. And so I'm going to choose patterns that are pretty benign. I'm going to choose colors that are pretty benign and that go well. And I am using air quotes that go well together. So although these pillows that are put out on the couches on display for you to buy, although those are really benign and lack quite a bit of personality, it doesn't mean that they need to stay there. It doesn't mean that you need to live with them forever. In fact, I give you permission right now. If you feel like you need to permit, have permission, hey, I'm giving you permission. Ditch them. Go ahead and donate them. Someone else might use them and find great value in that brand new pillow cover. So now what? You have a naked couch. It's time to bring in your personality, your character, your style, so that you can add nuance and story and character to your home's design. And today we're going to be talking specifically about mixing pattern. But your couch pillows or even your bed pillows, you can use the same idea for the pillows on your bed. These are opportunities for adding texture. When you add layers and depth and texture, it creates a warmth and coziness to your room. So be thinking not just in flat surfaces, you want to be thinking also about texture. So today I have five tips for you in order to mix pattern successfully without feeling like you are being garish, like you are setting up a circus tent for the clown. (laughs) Tip number one, create a color palette or use a color palette that is already created for the room that you are picking pillows for. If you're in your bedroom, remember that is a room that you can shut the doors. So that doesn't have to be the same color palette that you're using in the hallway outside. Just like your living room, that might be and most often is nowadays in an open concept area. So that color palette that you're choosing for the pillows on your couch in your living room should be the same color palette that extends throughout the rest of your home or the open concept area. Why would we have it be the same color palette? Because we want to create a unified, cohesive, put together looking home. And that is the easiest way to do that so that you can naturally use those same colors. But the creativity that goes into those colors is where pattern play happens. So it doesn't mean that you have to choose just the colors that are in your color palette, but they need to be dominant. And if you do bring in any other colors within the pattern, you know what I'm going to say next, 
you need to have some repetition, but that is, I am skipping ahead. That is one of my tips later on. So if my color palette for my living room, we'll say, or even my whole open concept area is neutral, and I use neutral in the sense that it could be whites and creams and oatmeals and very, very neutral. If that is my foundation color, and then I have my first, my primary accent color being navy and my secondary accent color being fuchsia, if I chose my pillows based on that color palette, and there happened to be maybe a few other little colors in my patterned pillow, maybe there's navy and fuchsia and the neutral colors, the creams, but maybe there's a little bit of aqua, or maybe there's a little bit of yellow. That is absolutely okay and makes your space more interesting and nuanced, but I want to make sure that the pillows or the co- the colors that are appearing in that pattern do appear somewhere else. And it might be as subtle as appearing on a spine of a book, a coffee table book. The second tip is to make sure you choose or start with an anchor pillow. I want you to think about this anchor pillow like a bossy big sister. You know, the one who kind of keeps order among the siblings. (laughs) The one where mom and dad leave and the bossy big sister is in charge and she's going to make sure everyone toes the line, right? So this anchor pillow is going to act like that. So for example, we're going with that same color palette I had of neutrals and navy and fuchsia. My bossy big sister anchor pillow is going to have all of those colors represented in it. Now she might have some of the other the other colors I mentioned, the mint or the yellow or lighter pinks or other blues, she might have that and that is absolutely okay. But we want that anchor pillow to be the check-in spot. We want the other patterns that you bring in to somehow relate or tie back to the bossy big sister. So for example, if I have the anchor pillow that is mostly navy with some lighter shades of blue and the fuchsia and it has it doesn't even really matter what pattern it is. I'm kind of picturing a chinoiserie or a floral or an eye cat, something like that, that has multiple, multiple directions going on, multiple colors going on, but it has all of the colors from your color palette inside. That is the bossy big sister, the anchor pillow. So what kind of pattern can I have in it? Maybe then I have a fuchsia and white striped, maybe a little subtle pinstriped pillow with some fuchsia tassels on the end. I'm going to check to make sure that the patterns I bring in next somehow relate to the anchor pillow. Is there fuchsia? Yep. Is there the neutral color? Yep. Is it bossy neutral? Uh, It might be a little bossy. Maybe I need a little bit subtler of a color. Or maybe I need a little bit more white in my anchor pillow. Whatever it is, you're going to make sure that the pillows you bring in really cohabitate well with the anchor pillow. That is going to be your checkpoint. The third tip is to use the rule of odds. So pillows in threes or pillows in fives are a really great way to allow for some neutrality when you're having a pattern play happening. And what might happen is we'll go with that idea of the navy blue chinoiserie pillow that has all the colors. And then we have, maybe we have a more fuchsia, a more fuchsia pillow with a light, subtle, creamy uh, pinstripe. We're going to reverse it because in my mind, when I was telling you white with fuchsia, it was too bright for me. (laughs) It didn't work and I'm not even looking at the pillow. But what's happening is you want to make sure that you have two by itself is fine, but the third can actually neutralize what's happening with the three. The third can make the two patterns play nicely together even though we're going to talk in a second about the easiest combination of pattern play, but the third can be a really nice landing space for your eye, a negative space. So if we're talking about, you know, when we're teaching little ones how to create art, for example, we use negative space as a way to show we don't need color everywhere. We can actually, we actually want to have a little bit of grounding, a little bit of calmness, And that's the same with decorating and not just in pillows. It's also in artwork. It is also in bookshelf styling. It is also in the way that you might have furniture. It, it really is a a concept that should be applied in all aspects of decorating and designing your, your home space is to make sure you have some negative space, make sure it is just not too full. And so that third pillow, that odd pillow is an opportunity to 
be that landing space, to be that neutrality, to be the tying anchor piece or the tying piece between the anchor and the other pattern that you're bringing in. So in this case, maybe an opportunity for a solid, but I highly, highly recommend that your solids are never flat. Your solids need to be just as interesting as the patterns, but in a textural way. When you have a flat pillow, sometimes it can bring about a flat appearance. So adding texture to it, and it doesn't have to be boho texture. I don't want to go necessarily on the extreme of, you know, macrame on a pillow because you do want it to be comfortable as well. But having texture, something where your eye can land and it can still be a neutral space, but also visually interesting is a very, very good thing. And it adds a little bit more uh, nuance and complication to the overall design. All right, tip number four, I alluded to this earlier, and this is really the key to great design, is repetition. Okay, repeat after me. Repetition is the key to great design. It really, truly is, especially if you're trying to create a home that looks cohesive and feels put together. And that is mostly the goal, is to look cohesive, to look like things belong where they should belong. And repetition is as easy as just checking if you have pattern, just checking if you have colors that are not in your color palette already, that are already naturally appearing somewhere in your room, just check. Look around the room. Do you see that little pop of orange that's popping out? Or do you see a little pop of green? Or do you see that little pop of aqua? Where is it somewhere else in the room? You don't necessarily have to have we'll say one orange item or two orange items because the orange is in the pillow or now two yellow items because the it is in the pillow or two aqua items because it's in the pillow, all of them together. But you might have, as an allusion to this repetition, you might have a multicolored, we'll say, spine of a book. So for example, now I just, I don't want you to think I'm contradicting myself. Because I did say earlier, if you have aqua showing up, you need to have aqua somewhere in your room. But if you have so many multicolors in your pattern, and those multicolors are not in your color palette, can you have a multicolored repetition piece somewhere in your room? And some of the easiest ways to do that are in book bindings, in artwork, in maybe candle holders, things like that. All right, and tip number five... These are some pretty fail-proof ways to try experimenting with patterns that are pretty easy to replicate. So I'm going to give you two combos. One is a large geometric shape and a small print, or vice versa. It can be a large print and a small geometric shape. The point here is that you have geometric shapes mixed with something that is just a little bit more fluid. I naturally think of floral when I think of fluid pieces. Chinoiserie is another example. I've mentioned that earlier. But when you think about geometric shapes, take a look at the patterned pillows. And even though they might have a little bit of fluidity to it, like a polka dot, that is still geometric. Stripes, buffalo check, gingham, all of those are geometric shapes. Now here's another another combo to be thinking about. Mixing large scale with the opposite small scale. So for example, if I have a small floral, remember the days of cottage core and having those small, small floral prints, I might want to pair that with something that a pattern that is a little bit larger. Can I pair two florals together? Sure, you can, as long as you're making sure that there's the repetition happening. And in this case, you may need that landing space. You may need that negative space to separate the two, but you can pair a floral, a small floral with a stripe. And that will work lovely together. Just following the rules that we've already talked about. Okay, as a recap, the five guidelines for pattern mixing pillows, whether it's for your sofa or for your bedroom. Number one, start with a color palette. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Use the color palette that is in that same room that you're designing. Number two, choose an anchor pillow that has all of the colors from the color palette. Number three, use the rule of odds. Three pillows, making sure that that third one is a neutralizing pillow that has a lot of texture. Number four, make sure repetition is happening. And number five, a couple combos that are easy to start pattern play with successfully are geometric, 
paired with fluid pieces and large scale prints with small scale prints. All right, friends, if you want help with picking your pillows for your sofa or your pillows for your bed or choosing a color palette, whatever it is that you have on your mind, my April calendar for decorating SOS calls is open. I'm going to put the link in the show notes for how you can book a call. Those calls can be used to create a roadmap for you when you're desiring action, you're desiring an action step, and you don't necessarily know where to start. Or maybe you're stuck. Maybe you're trying to choose between this couch or that couch. Or you want designer's eye on your space to see how can you add or take away elements in your space to make it look and feel more cohesive. Decorating SOS calls are designed to tailor to your specific needs in your specific home. The April calendar is open and spaces are limited. You'll find that link in the show notes. All right, I'm also linking the blog post that goes along with this podcast so that you can see a couple different ideas of pillow combinations that are mixing patterns with highly textural pieces or not, and identifying the anchor pillows within those combinations. All right, friends, that will be in the show notes as well. And if you have a question that you want answered, if you have something that you want to get clarification on so that you can know before you go, go to my website, figandfarmathome.com, go all the way down and you can leave me a voice memo that asks your question there. Or do it the old fashioned way. Send me an email at hello at figandfarmathome.com and I would love to answer your question here. Until next time, friends, I'll see you soon. Hey, real quick before you go. If you learned something new or found value in today's podcast, would you head over to iTunes to Fig and Farm at Home and leave a review and subscribe to the show? That would be awesome. And if you'd like to connect with my community of mamas who are learning to be intentional storytellers within their own homes, join us at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. There's always more room at the table. See you soon.